Football club, Werder Bremen. They have been a pleasure to work with from the media point of view. Open training this morning. No uh, real attempt to keep secrets from the prying eyes of the English media, or indeed any Arsenal scouts who might have wanted to, to check in. It's quite a difficult time for Alex Manninger because his Austrian national coach has said he's got to leave Arsenal. He played rather poorly in an international recently, and they're saying in Austria that he's not getting enough games and his international future will suffer because of that. Arsene Wenger not best pleased by those comments. Saying Absolutely he not. wouldn't be in the Austrian team in the first place if he hadn't played so well for Arsenal, admittedly, with limited opportunity. Well, I can, you can understand perhaps what, what both managers are feeling, but at 22 years of age, he's hardly, you know, he's very, very best. He's still in that very much an upward curve in his learning of the art of goalkeeper, no doubt about that. And I think Arsene Wenger can do without it. Dieter Eilts, who is really Mr. Werder Bremen, as Tony Adams is Mr. Arsenal. So just to remind you, the goal scorers at Highbury only a week ago, these matches coming thick and fast in the month of March in the UEFA Cup. Thierry Henry gave Arsenal the lead. And after a relatively sticky start to the second half at Highbury, Freddie Jungberg knocked in the second. And the Arsenal fans here will hope that those two goals, at the very least, will be enough to get them through. That was a big goal the second one, wasn't it? Yeah. And here's the huddle. Werder Bremen have a reputation for European recoveries at home, and not just this season either. The Werder Wunder, <coughs> they call it here. Now the last two ties have been more or less a formality for Arsenal. I think we might get something different tonight. Arsenal kick off. They feel that an away goal should see them through. And Werder Bremen have only kept six clean sheets in 38 games in all competitions this season, and none since mid-December. Really can't stress, as Arsene Wenger has been saying, the importance of the opening uh, 20 minutes. Well, I'll have to play better than they did, both in Nantes and La Carunia, Martin, because Arsenal were pretty sloppy, pretty poor. In the opening 20 minutes of both of those games, did concede against Nantes, could so easily have conceded in La Coruña. And I think that's and Wenger will be, have emphasised the importance of starting right and starting quickly. Fiedner, the left back, winning that header against Ray Parler. is the goalkeeper. What difference will Pizarro make? He can't hold the ball up there. Cano. Oh, the flag has gone up and uh, Thierry Henry was making it quite clear that he wasn't interfering with the play and was uh, wandering back. That's a poor decision. No doubt about that. Hands were up in the air, walking away, back to away from goal. Jungberg onside easily. Very poor decision from the officials. Oh, but Lushny hesitating. Boda got in, and this is Ailton. And Manninger grateful to be able to drop on that. Well, scuffed it, didn't he's cross, Ailton. It's as exciting as he's been in the two games. Ailton did more there on that little run than he did at Highbury in 90 minutes, but Lushny can't be making mistakes like that early in the game. But look at the way the ball's hopping off the surface. I don't think that's going to help them, but... Alex Manninger's happy just to drop on that. Just looking quickly, we talked about Boda and scoring him from midfield. He's actually taking quite an advanced position early on in the match. Frings, the stab clearance by Adams, touchdown calmly by Jungberg to Vieira, Kanu. And Dixon happy just to hoist it forward. He's got the uh, poorer half of the pitch to play in in the first half, 
One of the louder voices of dissent when Arsenal came out yeah. to have a look at this at training last night. Yeah, that's an easily free kick there, but I think get on with it is the message that you'll be saying. Don't concentrate too much on the pitch. Same for both teams. Get on with the job in hand. Vidana. So Frings, who played in midfield at Highbury to move forward from right back, Boda is well forward, Lushny stooping with the header, collected though by Pizarro. Corner for Werder Bremen, something we pointed out a week ago. Uh, top of the list of headed goals in the Bundesliga this season. And uh, very high on the list of scoring from corners, Werder Bremen. Herzog to take this one. That's poor. We'll take a few of those. Arsenal, no problem. If you don't have to deal with it, doesn't that make your life easy? That's a poor corner. That song's got better quality than that. Lovely a left foot. And they're a little disappointed. He wasn't able to put pressure on Alex Manninger. Henri, who's uh, improved form, has led to uh, a recall by France. He's not played for his country for 18 months, but he's in the squad to face Scotland. It's next Wednesday. It's odd, the Austrian. Flipped by Grimondi. He didn't finish the game on Sunday. Red carded against Spurs in the Premiership. Well, that's how high up the pitch Boda's playing. He's actually almost playing as a centre forward. Ailton and Pizarro are playing sort of left and right, almost against both fullbacks, trying to stretch the back forward. And Boda's the one who's been trying to go through the centre. That's Ogg's throw. Bauman. That's Ogg again. Wiedener. Advanced on by Eiltz. Lance is there again. Ended up on the deck, the referee. Saying to Dieter Arts, get up, but he's uh, too keen on doing that. He got caught, no doubt about that, Martin. Just as he played the ball, it's one of those ones we've seen in the Premiership in recent weeks, he gets caught. And his follow-through and the studs of Grimaldi. Thomas Schaff, who is the Werder Bremen coach. Not yet a full year into the job. Vieira. And uh, Wiedener slipping it through to Ailes. Pizarro trying to guide it off to Wiedener, who continued his run down this near touchline. Tough one for Thomas Schaff as well, Mark, as coach, what, what to actually do it. 2-0 down, you don't really need to go early hell for leather and risk losing a goal. You can be controlled and know that a goal any time in the match at 2-0, as long as Arsenal don't score, gives you a great chance. Well, I ultimate down a couple of times a week ago. He's slow getting up, but gets caught there by Adams. Could be a painful one. Arsenal so pleased to have Tony Adams back for the third game in a row now. Yeah, Pisano is looking at that as if he fancies it. You don't have to take the main scorer out. And it's Trares who hits it and well stopped for Arsenal by Alex Manninger. Back to pace for the man who didn't play at Highbury. Well, how close did I? Hilton get to get a touch on that. He goes across the face of the ball. You see him going across there now. Any touch off his heel or anywhere. Would certainly have made life difficult for Alex Manninger. That's the kind of save you want early on, though. It was a firmly struck shot, but straight at him, dealt with it well. Hiltz. Grimondi trying to bite in. Parler infield. Canu. Back for Parler. It's bending, it's in! Well, that's a great goal for Ray Parler at any time in any match, but particularly here tonight. 
Well, they backed off and they backed off, and he gave Ross absolutely no chance. There's not a goalkeeper playing in football now or ever before would have saved this. It's quite a magnificent strike from Ray Parler. A real hammer blow, but just watch the way he doesn't press him out. He allows him time and space. We need an awful lot to do, Ray Parler, but my goodness, didn't he do it well? Ray Parler's first goal in European club football, and it's an absolute beauty. It's only his second goal of the season, the other one was in the charity shield. Now look at this man, look at how, so he just stays there, stays there. And he sets it off about a yard wide of the far post. And this ball just starts to move. You and I were right behind this, wondering, is it going to get back quick enough? My goodness, what a start for Arsenal. And they lead on aggregate by three goals to nil. Well, the one thing we do know now, we won't be here for extra time from penalties. Goal coming in the eighth minute. I don't think either official involved there are absolutely sure about which way the throw should go, but it's gone to Werder Bremen. Yeah, just, just jubilation in one small section of the ground behind where Herzog is taking the throw, where the Arsenal fans are gathered, the flag is up. Yeah, jubilant, aren't they? Well, look at this for a strike. That's wonderful. <laughs> it just gets better every time you see it. And Frank Ross with an air of a man who knows he could do absolutely nothing about it and is fearful of the consequences of it. Trares. Boda. Forward by Adams. Henri's header. Ailton. Jungberg uh, trying to make uh, an interception there that would have uh, given more problems to Werder Bremen. Arsenal looking to win the ball well forward again. Stop Werder Bremen getting into their own half. Silvino out there again at left back. The two skippers in direct confrontation there. Well, that's a worst possible start for Thomas Schaff. No doubt about that, Martin. The team had started brightly. Parler. Cano! Touched aside by the goalkeeper. Could have been two. That's a great save. Deliberate placement from Cano. He knew exactly what he wanted to do here. I think that's just gone inside the post as well. And Ross had to be at his best. Silvino's come across to take the corner. Adams. Werder Bremen pushing out in organised fashion. Now, last week it was Arsenal who went into the first leg on the back of successive defeats. Now it's Werder Bremen beaten at Highbury and last Sunday in the Bundesliga. And already the goal down tonight. Game has been stopped. And uh, Kim Milton Nielsen, an international uh, class official from Denmark, will never be forgotten by uh, England followers and that incident in St Etienne. 
been sorted out and given Lee Dixon a free kick. Kanu looking to work with Henri, but uh, header went sideways rather than behind him. Boda. <laughs> it's one of those, Andy, you often say defenders have got to understand you can't get through bodies to get to the ball. It's an obvious foul to concede. I'll just stand, hold on, not going anywhere. Silvino. Well, it's just gone a bit flat the ground. It was a lot of noise, a lot of passion in here, a lot of expectation five minutes ago. And that wonderful strike has really deflated the crowd. Just beginning to come back to life. But now they know, I'm sure, that only four goals from now to the end and none more, no more from Arsenal will be good enough for them to go through. Well, that stretches even uh, mm. Werder Bremen's considerable powers of recovery. Well, much as we've talked to Arsenal's inability or to keep clean sheets, I certainly don't think we'll concede four. Jungberg might be another one in the offing here. Jungberg wanted to keep going and claim another goal. He's really been amongst them recently. I'll tell you, Barton just did enough, Martin. It was always second best to Jungberg. What he did, he just knocked him off balance. Enough. Not to give a penalty away. Looking for Pizarro. In his first season here, the Peruvian. And, uh, showing off his wares in the Copa America. for Pizarro again, easy for Adams to intercept, and the pile is caught in possession by Ailts. Boda, Herzog taking it over. Ailts. Bounces back off Dixon. Well, sensible football from now on for Arsenal. Concentration. Herzog's long throw, and Manninger, who is quite an impulsive young goalkeeper, but he made up his mind to go for that one. Well, that did not help. There's an half help coming in there. Plus for the players, takes the pressure off your defenders. Frinks. Silvino. Now Jungberg. Taken from him by Ailts. It is amazing that uh, Arsenal haven't won an away game since early December. <laughs> One victory in their last 12 on their travels. They don't need, of course, two win tonight. With that uh, two-goal cushion. No, but Arsene Wenger wants to win tonight, Martin. Well, you and I have spoken to him mm. in these away ties, and he was disappointed not to win in Nantes. Bitterly disappointed to lose in La Coruña. And I think having taken the lead tonight, he really will want Arsenal to go on and win this match now. Yes, the cushion looks altogether plumper mm. at 3 0. Particularly with one of those goals, an away goal. They did score four here against. Earlier in the competition, having lost the away leg 3 0. Pizarro, the player who's back tonight, got the goal that finally got Werder Bremen through. Grimondi. Ailes. Good pressure by Arsenal. Pizarro, who wriggles past Dixon, he's got Boda. Bit of a lunge by Luzhny. Boda has kept the ball in, only for Dixon to get first to it. They've come for a party, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Arsenal have come here to keep their cool and to play sensibly and professionally, and they've been given a huge boost in that respect by Ray Parler's wonderful early goal. Barton. 
off with a head injury on Sunday in the league game, but has been past fit to play tonight. Herzog. Bauman. Is the defender who lost track of Thierry Henry. The Hybrid in the opening goal of this tie. Well, this is good pressure from Arthur. Front two have worked on well. Canu and Henri. They've taken a long time. They work a bit of space. Brother Bremen. Adams. Vieira. Jungberg has scampered away. He's got Henri with him. He's got Kanu. He's looking, in fact, for Kanu. He's made the more decisive dart into the penalty area. Caught Jungberg's eye. Well, he goes up to admire between Jungberg and Patrick Vieira. And Dixon just gets there. It was Ailton's pass looking for Boda. It's good fullback play. Classic if you claim as a right back, the ball's coming down the other side. You've got to be around on cover. If he wasn't, and Boda's in. Dixon, uh, too experienced, too long in the twist to get caught out there. Altaras knows the corner taken. Bauman right in by the goalkeeper. Barton's in there as well. They played it to Vidana. And it's Barton. Blocked by Parler. And Ray Parler's out there again. Frinks. No foul. Vieira's challenge. Arsenal can break here with a three against one. Well, whistles go on, I think, Mark and Harley. Here, so many whistles from the crowd thinking it was a free kick for Werder Bremen at the edge of the box. But I think, I think it was Ajax who's in trouble. Salvinia was breaking halfway line. Three against one. They must surely have gotten... Well, it's not. It's Fiedner. It's Fiedner. They would surely have gotten a chance on goal. But Fiedner thought, well, I'd better bring this to a halt. That's Fiedner's third booking in this competition. That means uh, he is up for a one-game suspension. At this stage, it's unlikely to be uh, in the semi-final of this year's UEFA Cup because Arsenal hold all the cards here. I'll tell you what, if Ray Parler goes off now, Mark, he's probably made the most, two most important telling contributions to this match. The goal, and then that wonderful block when Barton looks out to score from no more than seven or eight yards. And even then he wasn't satisfied. No. He went out and made the, the challenge on the uh, far side of the penalty area as well. Dixon. Boda wasn't pulling out of that. Feedman. Caught by Carney. The referee has stopped the play. Again, it's hard to hear the whistle. They feel a little hard done by the Germans at the moment. It's a yellow card for Canu. He pleads his innocence, and he's not a vicious player by any stretch of the imagination. Those big, long legs that just caught Wiedner. And I tell you, anyone who was going to tackle Wiedner the next ten minutes, he was going to go to ground like that. The referee was probably going to book him. Canu's just the unlucky one. It was his tackle. Came off Parler, Herzog trying to clip it forward, just flicked off Ray Parler and it's gone behind for a corner. Arsenal lead 1-0 here, 3-0 on aggregate. Just over 20 minutes got in the second leg in Germany. Well defended by Vieira. Tricks. Plenty to aim at in the centre. Knocked out by Dixon. Be the uh, long throw, no. Friedner anxious to keep the game at a quicker tempo. Dropped it into the feet of Frinks. Friedner's cross. Trares, who uh, hit that shot from uh, long distance from the free kick earlier. Yeah, I just choked it. At times like that, when this surface really doesn't help you and the ball's coming back to you, if it gets any kind of little bobble as you're striking it, it can affect the quality of the strike. It certainly did there from Trares. Sixteen years since an English club was last in the semi-final of the UEFA Cup. There were two that year. Tottenham, who went on to win it, and the Nottingham Forest. And at this uh, moment, every chance that there'll be two from England 
this year. But here's Herzog. Ailton. Looking for Boda, who looked offside. No goal. Well, flags up. No goal. Flags up. Pizarro thinks he's started with a step or two on the road to a recovery here, but the flag was up. I have to say, from my angle, I thought that's the right decision. I thought just a yard offside. I didn't think he had to go in early, but he did. I thought the lines would get this right. Nearest the screen there, just an 18 yard line. The ball's played. He's half a yard offside. He did need to go, but he did. The flag goes up pretty much straight away. There it goes. It's a lovely finish. But I thought the linesman got that spot on. It was close, but he got it right. Bodo flagged offside. Pizarro, the player who put the ball in the net, but his celebrations cut short. But a reminder, really the first time, Andy, over what a game and uh, a quarter here that we've seen what uh, Ferdinand Bremen yeah. have been capable of earlier in the competition. Certainly dominating possession, but I don't think that will concern Arsenal tonight. They'll quite happily just let them play the ball about, and defend deep, and defend with numbers, and make life difficult for them and be professional. Parler's onside. Vieira's pass. Not much support for Parler. He's still going. He is still going. Same post, same result. 2 0 for Arsenal on the night. 4 0 on aggregate. And Ray Parler with a dream double in Bremen. Well, I can't tell you the quality of both of these goals that young man has just scored tonight. The first one, a stunning strike, but this is all about individual ability and desire to make something happen. He had absolutely no right to do what he's done there. No right whatsoever. Well, people might pick the bones out of poor defending, but look at the way he gets his body in front of Bowman. Get out the way, he says, and then before Barton can tackle him, he hits the ball early, takes the shot early, and gives Ross no chance. It's a wonderful piece of football from Ray Parler. It's and been that, a, oh, a wonderful 25 minutes oh. from Ray Parler at both ends of the pitch. Here's the number 25 for Arsenal, Kanu. We came here imagining all sorts of scenarios yeah. tonight, Andy, and I guess probably this wasn't the highest on the list. First of all, that if they get two goals, <laughs> they would both be from this side. <laughs> well, I think, I mean, I'd said I felt Arsenal would score all along. I, felt, I think they're geared to get a goal away from home in Europe, and any team who plays them is always going to be threatened like that, and, and that's exactly the way it is. I thought whoever scores first was important tonight. Alex is booked, another one, tackle on Cano, but whoever scored first was important. Arsenal did that early on, that was vital for them. Now they can just sit in, neat and tidy, block it off, and just say, right, we'll break whenever we can. We... Well, Kanu was uh, trying to screen it here, and it was a, a desperate lunge from Iles. Got the proper punishment, tackle from behind. Line. I think Wiedner left back talked about influence and in play. I thought he was tucked back in there. I thought he was onside on Ray. He would have taken a bit of catch in there, they're gone. Well you talk about the margins in football at the highest level, how slender they can be. A millimetre yeah. to the left, I guess, either way for Ray Parler, and he would have had neither goal. Instead, he's got two. Ailton. And the shot was promising again for Werder Bremen from Pizarro. But remember now, they need five. Well, this would be the, 
comeback of all time if they get five between now and the end of the match. And to be fair, Pizarro, he's looked a threat, Martin. The wonderful strike. The goal was disallowed. This one, it just gets underneath it slightly. See, he cuts under the ball. And that's why he sends it just a little too high. Tricks. Adams telling uh, Alex Manninga to come and mop this one up. Well, I'll tell you now, if they don't win this tonight, Arsenal, Arsene Wenger will be furious. <laughs> I'm telling you. He knows it's... You mean win, win the second game? Oh, yeah. Not win, go, go I'm, through. Yeah, I'm not yeah. talking about going through. I'm talking about which winning the match. I think he knows the tie's safe. And he'll be thinking that. But he'll want to side now to go and say, right, let's put this horrible away form to bed now. Let's get a good victory here. Silvino. Stopped by Bam and Silvino's caught out of position. And all time playing for the free kick. And getting it, bouncing down off uh, Fiera. Chavez. Arsenal must keep their concentration here. Space if he could have kept the ball in play. Well, Grimondi holds his head and he knows that wasn't a difficult pass, he just put too much angle on it. If he'd have played it anywhere in front of Henri, then really Bremen were all over the place. I know they have to take a chance, they've got to gamble even now in this game. But I just can you just get a feeling Arsenal could pick them off at any time. Vieira. And to put the, those sentiments into action out there. Still landed a bit untidy late, and it's ended. It's a free kick to Werder Bremen. <laughs> Chilling out, Patrick Vieira. <laughs> Nilton respectfully coming to help him back onto his feet. Mike Barton is the player down. Allowed to leave the scene of the crime, such as it was. Yeah, it didn't look too much, did it? Unless the incident happens now as they come and tangle again. Yeah, there's as much Ailts. Was it Ailts? <laughs> Herzog. Herzog comes flying in and tramples over a couple of them. on the pitch. Boda. Half of his own potential, uh, Pizarro, to score goals. Barton, incidentally, just to, uh, attracting the attention of the referee to get back on. But Pizarro is very good at linking up with the uh, other players as well. Yeah, looks neat and tidy. First chance I've had. With a look at him, the young lad, only 21. But he does look neat and tight, he's got good movement, good touch. Heads up. Here's Parler. And that was offside against the Jungberg. Quick free kick, Isles. Ooh, that was close. Cool. Cool. <laughs> it's been given as offside. That one was closer. And there's Pizarro in the centre. Well, I think they've been happy, Arsenal be delighted at that line, that particular line has been on Arsenal's defensive unit in the first half. A couple of close decisions, the goal that would have made it 1-1, although proven right, was close. And I think he just got that one wrong, though. Dixon. Signs up, flags up again, now it's down again. And, uh, another phase of play, but, uh, in fact, the referee has... Called play back to the original 
calling of the offside. I'm not so sure this linesman knows the offside rule now, down here, down below us. Because every time Thierry Henry is coming back towards his own goal, he keeps flagging him for offside. Grimondi. Well, one round after claiming their first ever Spanish scalp in Europe, Arsenal closing in on the knocking out of Bundesliga club for the first time. Just looking at Thomas Schaaf there, he was on the right ball at the linesman, down right in front of him, and the fourth official just over having a little word to help me settle down. Feeding his throw. He just joined us. Here on the banks of the river, Visa is going swimmingly for Arsenal. They have doubled their advantage to 4-0 on aggregate. The goal hero tonight, Ray Parler. With two really terrific efforts in their timing and in their style. Side decision given. It was a clear-cut one. While you, our German director was concentrating on the, the slow motion. Yeah. Jungberg. I do feel Arsenal are going to get one right in a minute. They're depending so far up the pitch, Werder Bremen. Well, Sylvania where I wasn't offside. You know, Henri was just but nine times already in this match. Arsenal have been caught. They are very high up the pitch, which is amazing when you think that Henri left them. The dead when he scored the opening goal a week ago at Highbury. You think they would be a little bit cautious about that, but at 2-0 down, they've got to try something. Jungberg. Kanu keeping pace with the Swede. Here's Kanu. Needs some nimble footwork. It's back for Thierry Henry to send in a skimming shot. It's a corner. Lovely, lovely again. They've got too much pace for this team, Martin all over the pitch, and even people like Jungberg and Parler, who we wouldn't class as, it's particularly pacey, are running away from Werder Bremen defenders quite comfortably. It's a lovely run from Jungberg, lovely link-up from Canu. Silvino. Henri just juggling it wide, the flag has gone up again. He must be called this linesman down below, as I tell you, keeps throwing his arms up every now and again. He's been, I must say, a rather eccentric, eccentric display of flag waving. <laughs> Ten minutes left in the first half. Boda's giving it away, well spotted by Grimondi. He can support Kanu down the outside. But he never looked in that direction. Chop down. Oh, he's so tall, every little bump he gets, he's like a giant oak tumbling to the ground. He's great feet, but <laughs> what a handful he is. And that uh, new contract agreed with Arsenal. Good news for the Highbury faithful. Well, I'm going to see a Brazilian. Swing his foot at this one. It is Silvino looking for his first Arsenal goal. Oh, he's hit the post. Canu! And the goalkeeper's managed to cling on. It would have rolled out to, of all people, Ray Parler and a hat-trick. But Ross saved the Canu shot. Well, that's a brilliant free kick. Ross just can only stand and watch and admire it like we all did. And look how quickly Canu reacts to it. And the only thing Ross does well is reacts very quickly to the rebound and makes a decent save. Well, at the moment, we've got three footballs on the pitch. I think that's probably the only way Brent are going to win this tie now. <laughs> Mark about it got away, and then it was clear that the referee had pulled play back. Well, he's kept that under wraps, Silvino, hasn't he? Yeah, not half. We were... Talking about him last week as the Brazilian who doesn't want to shoot. Yeah. Real rarity of players from that country. And now he's shown what he's capable of at a free kick, but I suppose Arsenal would do to hit the post and the ball not go in tonight. <laughs> yeah. 
Wiedener. Herzog. Trares. Ailton. He's got his free kick this time. He is theatrical. No doubt about that. Well, whatever happens in seven minutes of this half and the second half, I think we're going to see plenty of attacking emphasis. It's not in Werder Bremen's nature just to try and limit the damage and play out the game. And Arsenal look like getting through every time they get possession in midfield. Manning has set his wall. Pizarro doing the pointing. Ailes with the captain's armband is there. Boda lurking as well, the left footer. And it's set up for Pizarro into the wall. First out is Lushny, and he can get away. And Arsenal are streaming up in support because they know they play it right here, there'll be another chance. And it's still with Lushny. Well, he got it across the face of the goal, and the one who was standing and watching, and <laughs> I don't criticise him for it, really, Ray Parler. I oh, couldn't get in, Mark. I thought Lujny should have released Thierry Henry a lot earlier. He had a chance to knock a ball in, when, just about when he crossed the halfway line. Henry wanted it early, and when it didn't arrive, they kind of ran out of space. Ailto, it's an extraordinary game. <laughs> it's so open. And... Uh, for Arsenal supporters back in England, it's uh, making great viewing, I'm sure, and for all supporters of English clubs in Europe, the same. And what's turning out to be a pretty distinguished season for Premiership teams on a wider front. Pizarro. Heads up. Trares, good vision. He knew where Boda was. The pass wasn't quite perfect. And a chance for Boda to cross. The corner. Yeah, the error just back in. As you'd expect him to be. Realised there was a little bit of danger. But good play again. Pissarro, lovely footwork. Good movement from the young lad. Herzog again in charge of the right wing corners with his left foot. In towards Boda. Well, we talked about their heading abilities. And they've punctured Arsenal. At last, Marco Boda's header. Well, Alex Manning is asking the question. He feels he was blocked off as the ball came in. This was a corner of quality from Herzog. No doubt about that. Dropped right into the area you'd want it. You put people in. All it takes a touch from where it's landing. There's Manning coming out, says Bowman. Blocked him, I don't think so. Goalkeeper just misjudges this, doesn't really get to the, the height of the ball, the pitch of the ball, if you like. And it's just a little flick of the head that's required. Just before half-time, Thomas Schaaf at last gets something to smile about. Vidana. So 2-1 to Arsenal on the night, 4-1 on aggregate. Marco Boda, the one Werder Bremen player in the Germany squad that's announced yesterday for an international next week against Croatia in Zagreb. Didn't have to do much to do, though. Lovely, good position, look at this. Swing of the left foot, dropped it right on the sixth. Go ahead if you want a goal. Boda did. Defending by Werder Bremen, Jungberg. Offside given. Never. <laughs> <laughs> well, after failing to score in two successive games, Werder, Werder Bremen were due. And Boda just bringing a bit of interest back into it from their point of view. Well, still pride, need four. Pride's at stake, though. I think they'd, they'd quite like to win the match, Mark, and at least send the supporters home with a victory against Arsenal. I think that's what they'd be looking to do. That's what their coach will be trying to emphasise, I'm sure, at half-time. Yeah, let's try and win the game. And then, who knows? Foul 
fouled by Silvino on Pizarro. Bauma. Ailton can't get there. Adams knocks it away. Reminder that we've got uh, highlights of Slavia Prague versus Leeds, the second leg of that quarter-final coming up. And the live action finished here. Tell you there have been goals in Prague tonight. You can see those goals after their game is concluded here. We can't have extra time, remember. It's been a, a most open and invigorating first half here. It's got a minute or so plus stoppage time to run. Two extra minutes before the break. Well, a pretty good half all in all for Arsenal. They can't nice. be as confident of getting the right result, the right performance. It's been a pretty good 45 minutes for them. They'll be anxious just to see this last couple of stoppage minutes out. Wiedner taking Parler back towards his own goal, and Wiedner's got the better of Parler. That's an interesting one for the referee to call. Well, I'm not sure what he's got. I think he looks to me as if he's given a goal kick and he's said to be to get up. And you see the incident again. He looks like he's just got the wrong side of Ray Parler, Viedner here. Yeah, that's a bit of once. Not an awful lot happening there. Goes to ground far too easy for me. Oh, Alex Manning up, yellow card. Not quick enough for taking his free kick. A goal kick as it was. Get on with it. Well, from Arsenal's point of view, better a yellow card for Manninger than one for Parler. Yeah, because Parler would be suspended for the first leg of the semi-final. He's on the uh, tightrope. It goes for Adams and uh, Jungberg and Dixon. And uh, amongst the substitutes, Schuker as well. Rice and Arsene Wenger will shortly have their chance to have their say to the Arsenal players. Yeah, the speed he was going in with the needed air brakes there pulled up before he made contact with Dixon. So Arsenal have a free kick. Look at this way, had he got brakes, he wasn't going to use them. No. I think Palace should shoot for here. <laughs> the kind of first half he's having, he might as well, eh? It's too high for Adams. Kanu. Still Kanu. Jungberg. And it's Adams. No. Oh, oh dear. Oh, how's he missed it? Trying to do his Kanu quick shoe shuffle. Stoppage time before half time. Wiedner. Now comes Manninger, but uh, Luzhny. Decides that he needed to get across quickly to boot it away. Well, this ground might have emptied if Tony Adams had slid this in. He obviously didn't fancy getting the past Ajax. He tries to do a little drag back and in, but didn't get control of the ball. It's come off Adams' head, and it's half-time. Well, it's been Ray Parler's party so far in the Visa Stadium here in Bremen tonight. Two... Truly terrific goals to ease any Arsenal anxiety and to double their advantage to 4-0 on aggregate. Marco Boda's header has made an incision into that, but it's going very well here tonight. At half-time, 2-1 on the night, 4-1 on aggregate. Oh, you. A Yugoslav international.
confirmation of those changes for you. Herzog with the throw. Ooh, and, uh, Adams impeded by Bogdanovic. I think goal kick's just been given. Adams I don't think wasn't best pleased there. No, I think this is what you call going for it now, isn't it? Mm. They're going to play a back four and then six attackers by the looks of things. Although they're going to go three central. And Maximov sort of just anchoring it, I guess. But as you say, like, they do like to go forward, so I'm sure he won't anchor it too much. There he is, Maximov, Barton. Bauman across to Fiedener. Boda's has taken on the captain's armband. Ailta, Maximov. Kim Milton Nielsen telling uh, Herzog to get up. He made uh, a bit of a meal of that fall after being challenged by Adams. Ori. Jungberg's in the centre. Still Ori. For Vieira. For the man of the night so far, Ray Parler. Very nearly dropping for Kanu to just knock it down with his head and stride on. Well, you just feel a fast, they'll defend well and are disciplined at the back, that there are going to be so many gaps, Martin, that appear and that they can exploit. I certainly don't think Bremen are set up now second half to defend with any great conviction. They're either going to win this game probably 4-2 or they're going to lose it maybe 4-5 themselves. Boda. 4-2 wouldn't be enough, of course. Master would uh, go through on the away goals. 5-2. Would be enough. <laughs> well, if it gets to 4 2, it would be interesting. <laughs> Kano. Goes behind for an Arsenal corner. Remember, no Dennis Bergkamp. He wanted to come, we understand. But Arsene Wenger, mindful of the needs of Arsenal at home in pursuing high premiership ranking at the end of the season. That's a Held him back. Grimaldi trying to do to that corner what Boda did when he scored just before half time, but the ball was just too long for him from Silvino's delivery. Frinks. Boda. Not short of support, and Herzog almost have got it through towards Come on, let's play, Pizarro. Pizarro. Hey, let's get yeah. Maximov. Yeah. Intercept, he certainly made Bauman scurry. Werder Bremen knocked out a couple of Norwegian clubs in the first two rounds. Then came the two great comebacks from 3-0 down against Lyon. Here's uh, Vieira. And then the match here against Parma. They were 1-0 down from the first leg, 2-1 down on aggregate during the game and needing another two goals, which they got. the ball it'll drop for Patrick Vieira off Marco Boda for another Arsenal corner on this near side and the two of the Arsenal players didn't see that deflection and Parler was roaring back to get into his shape for what he thought was a goal kick his Henri because there are so many balls around the pitch as well Mark because this running track went often players switch off and the balls whacked out of play but very quickly one of the ball boys throws another one on Vieira decides to use Henri towards Vieira again. Strong work from the midfield man. Kano is in. Well, not quite in. Yeah, just, just a little too far in front of him. 
Lovely play again, Vieira strong. Not only that, got good vision, he's always a threat here. Anything round about the edge of the box is always a threat with Canu. Wriggles and moves. So more Arsenal pressure in these early minutes of the second half. Carla's corner. Banged away by Boda. Silvino wants to let it run. away from him. Berta Bremen on the move here. And, uh, it's a vain chase from Bowden. <laughs> Typifies their desire. Maybe the pitch didn't help Pizarro with the weighting of the pass. Absolutely not. Sat up just as he played it. Instead of the inside of the foot making contact with the ball, which is probably his ankle. Pizarro, Adams. A bit of bang in there, he's just stayed down, Tony Adams. Flexing and just the hobbling at the moment and hoping that Werder Bremen don't mount an attack here. Herzog. Adams still sorting himself out. Friedner can't get the cross in. Lushny with Bogdanovic trying to glance it on in front of him. Barton's header, Parler supporting with a shrewd touch to Kanu. 360 degree turn, accomplished. So uh, fluidly. Henri. Adams gets the header, but he's uh, looking rather anxiously at the Arsenal bench. Trying to head the ball across to Lee Dixon a moment or two ago. Well, they just clashed with Lucian, didn't they? They both went for the same ball. And it was a whether it was an awkward landing where he just took the groin or you know, damaged the thigh. Finish! Finish! Maximov. Hurts up. Flank's gone up. Ailton darting in. I didn't think so much. Out Adams. I, at first, I didn't think there was much doubt about this, but look how close it is. That again is borderline. That is borderline. The flag yet again goes in Arsenal's favour. Maximov. Barton. and he's in the team because the veteran Brazilian defender Julio Cesar has been injured and he's in fact gone back to Brazil and says uh, he's not coming back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, modern football for you. Sal Salos, who's the general manager here, who is a very fine player in his heyday, I'm sure you'll remember him. He's been trying to reassure the locals that he is coming back, but... So, sure, here's uh, Luzhny taking pretty much all the time that was uh, available to him. Well, he wanted his goalkeeper, that's what he did want. And Alex Manninger wasn't very quick in coming from his line to help the defender. Vieira. And Pizarro wins it back, and Werder Bremen have got plenty of options going forward. Boda's touch. Maximov. Ailton. Well, he's pointing near post, I think he's... Rather hoping someone would be in there, but I think it's a pretty poor cross at the end. He had time. Frinks. Fremont D. Oh, 
Well, offside, one thing after we're worried about tonight is should this go to penalties because they've gone out of the League Cup and the FA Cup this season by that route, Europe would have been too much to bet. Yeah, it would have been. Yeah, that's quite comfortable, as you can see. Doesn't really trouble Alex Manninger. I yield him with that cross. It cannot be extra time or penalties tonight. So, Werder Bremen. 35 minutes to go, still chasing four more goals. Something's going to come off Lee Dixon last touch, so Manninger couldn't pick it up, and he's actually, uh, as they would say in the rugby code, found a very good touch. Absolutely. <laughs> but Arsenal are playing just controlled football at the moment, Martin. The back four are nice and tight and compact. They know they're facing up against the front three almost, so they're just making life as difficult as they can. And it's all about not making individual errors for Arsenal, just seeing it out. Or he's surely onside. And the flag has stayed down. Kanu loping into the centre. Henri, I think he was trying to play it to Kanu and caught it maybe on the heel and it went straight at the goalkeeper. Well, I think he did try and play it, but wrong choice of foot for me. You coming in on in the inside left, left side, and then you square yourself up. Look at Kanu's run, it was coming in beautifully. It would be in step with the left foot, roll it across goal, and Kanu taps it in. He tried to use a right foot and got it all wrong. Well, there was great tenacity there from Vieira. And, uh, Jungberg goes down. Free kick to Arsenal. And even playing uh, with more control. That's what happens at half-time when the manager gets a, a say to the players. He's uh, playing with joyous abandon, really. <laughs> the most open of first halves. But even now, with the wise words of caution from uh, Arsene Wenger, I'm sure, still opportunities presenting themselves as we saw when Henri got away a moment or two ago. But here's Boda. Milton can't get to it. Dixon. Bauman drawn across to Parler. Support arriving from Grimondi, but Parler's not in the mood <laughs> play the easy thing when so much of these tries that's been difficult has come off, but it didn't come off there. Maximov. Thinks. A big game here on Sunday against Borussia Dortmund as Thomas Schaff's team tried to pick up the Bundesliga uh, to earn European qualification for next season. They might do it through the German Cup, of course, as they did for this tournament. They're in the final again. It's more against Bayern Munich as it was last season. I don't think he's unlucky there. That's, that ball certainly didn't cross the line. And again, the linesman with the hair trigger finger on that flag down below is, is up again. And then go out quickly this time. Well, what tonight does allow Arsene Wenger to do if he wants to, Mark, he's and certainly in recent weeks had plenty to say about, you know, quick games coming up in succession. He can change it if he wants at any time. This is Ray Parler. in by Thierry Henry, the sort of chance that Arsenal have been getting so regularly, they've taken this one, Henry scores in the UEFA Cup again for the fifth game in a row, and Ray Parler, who scored the other two tonight, put it on a plate for it. Well, I told you, they're not here to defend, they're all over the place again, and just look at Arsenal players, I mean, take your pick, Ray, you could have gone on yourself, mate, and got the hat-trick, but he was very unselfish, Henri put the brakes on, Jungberg went into the six-yard box, they split well, he had two options, he chose the right one, simple tap-in for Henri. Not much joy from him though, I think they know the game's over, it's one of those they just want to get it over with now. That was too easy, all so easy. Ailta. Oh, and there's one back, Bogdanovic. Well, it might not all be too easy. But it's over. You're not telling me that they're going to get beaten. <laughs> it's a lovely strike, and that Elton's lovely little chip pass was exquisite. It looked to be going nowhere. Brazilian, and he just had a little look up and spotted Bogdanovic and dropped it beautifully to him. 
volley's a sweet one. He just pulls away. I think he's trying to find a chance for himself here, I open at first. You see Bogdanovich, no one really picks him up. He's signaling for the ball. That was a lovely little ball to him and a, well, a fine volley. Well, it is now Werder Bremen 2, Arsenal 3. In this match, 2-5 <laughs> on aggregate. And uh, just as Henri wasn't really celebrating, nor was Bogdanovich. <laughs> 55 seconds between those two goals. Barta, Boda. Ailton. Bogdanovic in the thick of it again. Manninger got a, enough of the ball to uh, knock it down to Freddy Jungberg. He's being pressed back, helped by a Arsenal captain who's moving a bit better at the moment than he was a few minutes ago. A lovely ball out from Tony Adams and Ori's away. But Frings is one of the quicker Herda Bremen players. Well, I look down below me to Emmanuel Petit, Mark Overmars, both ready to come on. Arsene Wenger is taking this opportunity to get a couple of players some more match fitness and maybe rest a couple with the th thought of the weekend coming up. Boda. It's Dixon's ball. That was the Bauman for Werder Bremen. Maximov, Thomas Schaff wanting them to uh, switch the play. Did just the opposite, in fact. Gives Arsenal a chance to attract the attention of the referee, and uh, it is Tony Adams who's coming off. 17 minutes into the second half. Manu Petit, who might feel he owes Werder Bremen one, he was in that Monaco side that lost the Cup Winners' Cup final when Arsene Wenger was the Monaco manager back in 1992 to Werder Bremen. So he's missed the last couple of games, Manu Petit. He gets an outing here tonight as a substitute for the skipper. And Mark Overmars is uh, getting ready to come into the game, but they haven't made that change yet. So Grimondi's gone to the back. And then Petit played as a centre-back in La Coruña, in the away leg in the previous round. No foul on Maximov, he thought there was one, the referee didn't, and Arsenal have got four forward here. Henri couldn't find the other three, and now he could find himself booked for that. By Kim Milton Nielsen, oh, he's been oh, sent okay. off for it! The referee who dismissed David Beckham in the World Cup when England played Argentina has produced that same red card here for Thierry Henry. I'm staggered, I have to say, that, that is the most staggering decision this referee needs looking at. That is absolutely ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. A game that said nothing, there hasn't been a tackle in it. It's a straight red card. He could miss both legs of the semi-final. That's a staggering decision, I have to say. Arsene Wenger's at the fourth official, he's quite rightly at the fourth official. Only trying to make the point, I think, is his first foul. That might not be technically the case, but... Well, Arsene Wenger, you know something's up here when you get a... As man as mild-mannered as Arsene Wenger is sensed to such an extent. That's a ridiculous... I haven't seen one like that. I thought the Beckham decision was a, a poor one in the World Cup, man. I have to say, that one is just beggar's belief. Beggar's belief. Well, Thierry Henry has done so much to get Arsenal this far. Well, that's a decision that might cost Arsenal a chance of winning the UEFA Cup. He's a top goal scorer. And you see it, there's nothing, there's nothing challenge. Well, I expected him to get a yellow card for it, to be yeah. fair, Andy. Not that, not by any means that. Boda. Arsenal down to ten men. <laughs> Another aspect of the evening, as far as the officiating is concerned, has been this... Uh, 
constant raising of the flag by this official in particular. It's up again. Yeah, this one more clear cut. A couple of them take a pick here. He's got a good possession, the linesman there, and that was an easy decision for him. Well, that has taken some of the shine yeah. off the occasion. Oh, well, Arsenal were just cruising. It's as simple as that, Martin. I was just about to say, well, every time they have possession, Arsenal can create a chance any time they want. Pizarro in the centre, headed out by uh, Grimondi. Cano without to Henri to give him company, but <laughs> look at he's taken four on Cano. He stopped expecting the whistle, it didn't go. Well, much has been said about Arsenal's disciplinary record. It's offside again here, Ayota with Boda's pass. What did you think about that one, Andy? Well, I certainly looked at it from my angle. I'm not right in line, but it, often it happens quickly. And Ailton does play on the shoulder. Again, I think he's off. What, a couple of yards? It must be. Linesman gets this right. Well, Arsenal had had a long spell without... That uh, red card record under Arsene Wenger being brandished as a criticism of the Arsenal management until Sunday when Grimondi went off the uh, first uh, dismissal since Arsenal had played at Tottenham. But now, to uh, I think it's fair to say universal surprise, Thierry Henry red carded. Universal amazement as far as I'm concerned, absolutely staggered. That, that referee can consider that a straight red card. Absolutely staggered. But maybe we shouldn't be after David Beckham's. And here comes Palmer. Kanu. Oh, oh. Kanu, that's brilliant. Round the goalkeeper, it's a very difficult angle. <laughs> He's tried one of those as curlers that he scored with against Chelsea, of course, from right by the byline. Try to further out. Just overdid it, didn't he? Great break, and even with ten men, Martin, I'm, I'm convinced Arsenal can still create a chance or two if they want to. But look at Cano, just leaves him for dead there, and I thought, go on, just dink it over the goalkeeper. But when he tried to go around him, really, the angle was all against him. Well, that was a shot. And Andy hurts up. Yeah, look how close he is. You can see he's trying to use the eyes there, he's trying to kid them on, and he's going to cross goal. He's only fractionally out. Pretty low, yeah. Bauman. Boda. It's well defended by Silvino. The break's on again. And this time it is Parla against the goalkeeper. Ray Parla for the hat trick. Ray Parla has scored his first Arsenal hat-trick. It's been a brilliant night for him. Absolutely unforgettable. I have to say, Martin, I've never seen a poorer piece of defending than we've seen from this team today. I think they've been awful. Arsenal have just picked the bones out. And look how high up the pitch they are. Look at Ray Parler, look at the space he's in. <laughs> Absolute acres. And he just takes his time. He's so confident at the moment. I didn't think he was ever going to miss it, I have to say. Well done, son. He's had a brilliant night, Ray Parler. An absolutely top-class night. And so have Arsenal, apart from the one shocking decision from the referee to send off Thierry Henry. It's been a glorious... Absolutely glorious. And the third goal for Parler, the fourth on the night, has come with his team down to ten men. 
Manu has now come off to be replaced by Mark Overmars. 2-4 here this evening, 2-6 overall. Mark, what is the procedure with, I thought, is it not an automatic ban for Henri, no? Well, it's, it's automatic. And but I think how that many? There's not the, an automatic games? The disciplinary committee, as a straight red, will assess it. Right. That's my understanding of it. Well, that'll be an interesting one for them, if that's the case. It's hardly been noticeable, Martin, that they've dropped a man short. Overmars, taken from him. Petit gets his head to the clearance. Winterberg. Parler. That was a fine ball from Ray Parler. <laughs> Not half. Overmars. He's with ten men, one more. Yeah, Petit at the edge of the box, Martin, if Overmars had only spotted him. Just a little roll back for him. In the past, Arsenal have gone out of European competition to Cologne. And Arsene Wenger might recall the last time they went out to a Bundesliga team, had Borussia Mönchengladbach. It was the first time a current Arsenal manager had seen his team in action. The second leg in Germany. Ended the uh, European involvement for that season very early on. Drive by Herzog. Just over Mars forward for Arsenal. This has been a, a splendid performance. It's oh, just yeah. the sending off that has cast these shadows over the, the consequences of victory. Well, I'm sure if, when we talk to Arsene Wenger after the match, he'll be absolutely amazed. He'll be furious about the decision. Actually, uh, the ball did stay in then. And Dixon turned back and finally knocked it out. Pizarro with the throw. Maximov, Barton, everyone back defending for Arsenal. Petit, and we're on again. Arsenal on the counter attack. That's the furthest up the pitch I've ever seen a team defend. And, and, and me, you know, they were 15 yards inside, 20 yards now they're inside Arsenal's half, the last defender, and no one behind them. You can't get offside there. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Well, if Arsenal win the ball, they just knock it over Mars, he's through. Herzog. And here he is. The best surface on which to carry the ball, and Mark Overmars didn't look too uh, full of self belief that he could uh, do that. He didn't, did he? he was Overmars warmed and ready and primed, would have just knocked the ball past the defender and gone. Boda. To knock it in for Pizarro. <laughs> Winterberg. Jungberg. Overmars would have been offside. He was trying to look along the line. Winterburn keeps it in, gets a bang for his troubles from Maximov. Overmars pass, now, if that's seen as a foul, he's the last man. Tim Milton Nielsen. Says play on, Jungberg's not impressed. Well, he might smell the referee, but he's had a nightmare, I have to say. Fricks. Good challenge by Manninga, certainly got the ball. And he left uh, Marco Boda in a heap as well. well. If you're going to come out there, you've got, you've got to make sure you take everything as a goalkeeper. Boda was going in with purpose. Manninga just got there. Took everything with him. Just like this. Just made it. Well, he's got to do that. It's 
It's a good ball in this from Frings. It's there to be attacked, it's tempting the goalkeeper. Good positive decision in the end from the goalkeeper. Mind you, of course, the Leeds United in action also tonight at this stage of the same competition. Their second leg in Prague against Slavia. Highlights coming up when the action is finished here. Dixon. Petit. Here's Overmars. It's Silvino uh, galloping up with him, but Overmars with the goal in his sights, but he couldn't put the ball between the posts. Yeah, a little bit of pressure. That was the only difference between Overmars getting a clear shot at this or not. Barton had got back in, did well, just did enough to put Overmars off. Andy, you mentioned about Arsene Wenger losing his cool. And it is a, a real rarity to see that. Ailton, left-footed. Still Ailton, there's a goal for him for the taking here, but Manninga denies him. What a save, son. It's the best piece of skill we've seen from Ailton in almost 180 minutes of football where he's played against Arsenal. Great feet. Works the position brilliantly. And that's a superb save from Alex Manninga. Does the right thing going across the goalkeeper, but fine left-handed save. I was thinking Arsenal aren't the biggest team now with... Uh... Adams off, Grimondi trying to do the organisation and win the headers as well. <laughs> and it's booted all over the bar by Marco Boda. Oh, the air of a man who knows this is uh, long gone away from Werder Bremen. Well, I thought that was enough. I thought as the ball came across the goal from the corner, everyone just left it. Manning got get caught all over the place. Just to go back to Arsene Wenger, and he, he has very strict rules for the members of his staff on the bench about their code of behaviour. He doesn't like to see them get fired up and maybe uh, give some uh, fuel to the opposition. Yeah, I think that was a measure of just how intense they felt about that decision, how staggered he was. I certainly think, as I was, that the red card was shown for that innocuous challenge. Fricks. Actually, I mentioned to uh, some further Bremen people here about this referee and the David Beckham connection, and they said, well, he sent off our goalkeeper, not this one playing tonight, but his predecessor when he caught the ball on a very wet night and actually slid out of the penalty area, couldn't stop his momentum. And that was a very controversial decision made by Kim Milton Nielsen involving a, a Werder Bremen match. Jungberg. Well, now what's he going to do here? Uh, probably nothing. Barton was the last man, even though he was, what, five yards? Maybe not four yards. In his own half. That, that mark is, a, is a, a far more severe foul than the one that Thierry only committed. Pretty young bird getting uh, some uh, attention by the touchline from Gary Lewin. Right, when in doubt, give it to Ray Parler tonight. That's what Grimondi did from the free kick. Dixon. Will drop here for Boda. Bogdanovic in the centre, Pizarro in the centre. Headed out by Gilles Grimondi. Herzog. Thinking about trying to pick a way through. <laughs> Soft side against Boda. It's incredible, isn't it? Got it wrong again. <laughs> I have to say, the referee's not at the best game. This guy on the near side is an absolute nightmare of a game. 
got more wrong than he's got right in these offsides. I know it's difficult, but... Oh. Three minutes to be added on. Scuffed kick by Manninger. Well, forgetting the red card for a moment. The most important feature of this game, really, the first goal by Ray Parler. It took the steam out of what many of us coming here felt would be a, a tricky test for Arsenal. Arsenal have been superb, I have to say. It's a glorious performance from them. You know, and I'm sure take the Thierry Henry incident away from this, Martin. I bet you Arsene Ben will be thinking, well, we'll go a long way to find a better performance away from home in Europe than the one his team have given tonight. Off, wanted to get it down, no time for that in there. Herzog. Oh, and, uh, over Mars. And a poor touch then. Matters little at this very late stage. We're in stoppage time, Bogdanovic blazing high wide and not very handsome. The way Arsenal play with ten men has emphasised their superiority over Werder Bremen. Petit. Frinks. Too high for Pizarro. Let's cross a good ball, Frings. I have to say, this right hand side, if you give him a little bit of time, delivers, and he has done, he's delivered some lovely ball from right to left into dangerous areas. He was a, a tip to be in the German squad. He hasn't been selected, in fact, for the next week's game against Croatia, but he's certainly an outside bet for the Euro 2022. Torsten Frings, versatile player. Well, the best thing the referee can do is blow the whistle, Mark. This game's over as a contest. It has been for a long time. Maximov. Winterburn still gets there. Nippoli. Twice. Off goes Petit, Winterburn judging the pass. At least in the direction, but not with the power. Shame. It's been a lovely way to finish, and he got that pass right. Petit would have gone on and scored. Arsenal are into the last four of the UEFA Cup. A red-letter day for Ray Parler with a hat-trick. A red card day for the other scorer, Thierry Henry. Some red mist for Arsene Wenger about that decision. But it's about the only thing that's gone wrong for Arsenal here, even though they conceded goals to Boda and Bogdanovic. They've got the better of a club from the Bundesliga for the first time in European competition. No recovery for Werder Bremen this time. The semi-final draw is tomorrow. And Arsenal are in it. Well played the Gunners tonight. Good luck in the European Cup. Oh, I think so. It's been a stunning performance. Eight minutes in, that man produced a quite stunning shot. And from then, you always thought there was only one winner, Martin. They were disciplined, they were professional. They did a super job of an away tie in a European match. Arsene Wenger will be delighted apart from that one little block. Well, they've won the match here, an away win for Arsenal in the second leg. They've swamped Werder Bremen in the tie on aggregate by six goals to two. Great night. Very, very enjoyable game of football. It really was. Still to come tonight here on Sky Sports News. Next, there's highlights of the UEFA Cup quarter-final tie between Slavia Prague and Leeds United on one at ten.
There's Thursday night sports centre followed at quarter past ten by our football phone in. You're on Sky Sports. Over on two now, there's golf. The first day of the Players' Championship at Sawgrass. And on Sky Sports 3 at 10, there's another World Cup Classic, the 1974 match between East Germany and West Germany. And if you're watching on Sky Digital over on Sky Sports Extra at 10, you can catch more wrestling action from the WWF and Late Night Metal. Great game. And Arsenal through to the semi-finals.